Hello, this is Salvatore Vinciguerra. Today I'll be talking about meaningful music learning and what that looks like, especially at the beginning stages of learning as a young child and then progressing to middle school and high school. And I'll even be talking a little bit about for parents since this is something that they always ask is what should be learned maybe in private lessons are private lessons good for my child, and so forth. So this is a little bit about what I'll be talking today in regards to uh, music theory and uh, making uh, music so enjoyable that someone can take what they're learning and expand upon that and uh, use it for the rest of their life. First, I'd like to share with you a poster that I put up about the second or third week of school. And some teachers can put that up right away because for me, this poster um, asks students to really think about their behavior in a music class. And sometimes um, music educators' job, their goal is to expand upon um, what the student's mindset is for music in their lives. And so this poster kind of has them reflect and uh, hopefully they can open up their minds to uh, the various cultures and styles that, uh, you know, is found throughout the world and even in American music so that the music educator's job can be a little bit easier. But um, basically it is um, a poster that um, is a pledge and it's a musician's pledge and I think that it is very helpful especially in these first few weeks of school to help them expand their mind. So here it is. I'm first going to talk about when does musical learning take place? I think it's good for me to go back to, uh, you know, when does that first take place? And I would say that uh, most medical science uh, doctors and so forth would say, and I'm not one, I'm a music educator, but in the womb is able to hear. And uh, people, there are stories of, you know, and even research um, that talks about um, you know, playing music to the baby, mother singing, um, parents that are musicians themselves playing their musical instruments uh, and the reactions uh, that the baby's having inside and how that is so beneficial to um, that baby and uh, setting their brain up for learning and so forth. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, new research coming out and I hope that uh, new parents um, go and dig up some of these books and the research on that to help their child in the early stages of their life. Um, and they even have programs for babies. And one of the most extraordinary classes that I have been able to observe is music garden classes where there's an instructor and there's um, parents and the babies uh, are in the classes and they range from you know a couple of months old to a few years old and some of it is sound exploration or music exploration um, and it's a very wonderful type of activity for parents and their child to not only learn about music but as a bonding type of experience which I think is quite human and part of music which we need to really develop is our understanding of it as a culture and what that means to us as a human and in our lives. Now I'll be talking about, well, okay, we have the early learning experiences and maybe pre-kindergarten or before that if you take a music garden class. And then when is it acceptable to begin playing a musical instrument. Some parents want to just jump into this stuff and there are classes and there are special instructors that can do this. Um, Suzuki is one of those 
and the Suzuki method, I believe, starts at the age of three. And um, it is a unique um, system and approach by uh, Mr. Suzuki. And um, it has a lot of learning that um, is pedagogical, meaning it's dealing with posture, it's dealing with producing a sound, it's using rote learning in order to learn. And um, I have seen some very successful courses, but make sure that it is a Suzuki class if that's what you wish for your child to take. Um, you know, don't try to do the Suzuki method maybe with the instructor not being able to use all of its capabilities and understand the philosophy of that particular methodology for early learning. For me, in my experiences, I think as long as a child you know, they can play, and musical play is great in the early stages of life um, as a child. And so you should, as a parent, um, make sure that they have those opportunities to explore with play instruments and maybe some real instruments where they can tinker with them and make sound on their own. For piano lessons, I find that it is important to uh, make sure that that child is learning their numbers and their letters and as soon as they are able to do simple reading of words and letters and so forth, then you can start, begin introducing, introducing um, music theory to them. And uh, a couple of methods that, um, or piano methods that I used in the past would be the Bastion method, I think was the most successful. And having a student learn and um, how to play the piano they're playing it, they're learning the pedagogy behind that, um, they're singing while they're playing their simple songs, and then there's the transmission uh, into actual note reading and, uh, you know, reading that, and they can even write little simple songs themselves with that one little methodology uh, by, in the Bastion series for piano. So that's very helpful at those stages. I'd like to also mention that the piano serves as a primary foundation for musical learning. And it is best for parents to include that in their musical learning in some way or another. Not just handing them a piano and say, go on YouTube and here, here's this video and, and learn how to do it by, you know, finger or whatever it is. That's actually wrong. And some instructors uh, put the cart before the horse to try to teach a song before there's meaning into what these uh, children want to do. And uh, yes, they do have to learn the notation system. And yes, music is a theory and music can be learned many different ways. There are oral traditions of music and we have our theoretical version which helps mus musicians um, understand what they're playing together. And yes, we can even uh, go on the other side of the debate and say, well, modern composers, some of them in the gaming and uh, movie industry, when they're composing, aren't even using those types of systems. Um, so why should we learn them? And they're just exploring sound and coming up with compositions like that. Um, but I think that if parents are investing in their children and uh, they want the music to last a lifetime, then you should invest uh, in a teacher that is going to be teaching students um, music theory and making it meaningful to playing that particular instrument. So um, I just want to say also that for vocal learning, uh, for students that want to be singers or they want to explore that type of activity, the piano is an instrument that they do need to um, have in their background. And especially, um, you know, it plays a good role uh, to having them listen to the pitches uh, that are coming out of the instrument so that they can match it. It's also good for other instruments too. Um, if a student wants to learn a violin or a cello, um, I think that those instruments are very uh, difficult to learn, but if they have the prior background knowledge in uh, what those pitches are on a piano and they start maybe there first then they have some sort of reference point or maybe a reference instrument to go back to uh, to apply their musical knowledge to. 
Now I'd like to talk about what I do with either private lesson students that are in elementary school and middle school. Um, and it, it varies. Um, if they are in early elementary school, I may start out with uh, the Bastion Piano Series if they want to learn piano. If they're in their later years of elementary uh, and going into the middle school, then maybe the Alfred Adult course is a little bit better. Um, please, you need to supplement those uh, books with something, those methodologies with a little bit of something. And I'm going to share with you what I use with my middle school and high school band students to make music lear uh, musical learning more made up, meaningful. And that is to use um, the Master Theories series by Charles S. Peter and Paul Yoder. And Paul Yoder was a professor and uh, worked at Troy State University, which is um, where um, I have one of my degrees from in music education. And um, I like this book because it goes step by step. Here's the treble clef. Let's draw it. Here are the notes. This is how you count them. And psychologists would agree that, um, you know, in musical learning, that not only understanding how to read it, but to write it and draw it and be creative with it. And I like how um, in different places of this book where he, they, these authors get uh, the students to think musically about what they're doing. Um, and uh, I find it uh, a great method that uh, even my middle school and high school uh, directors use this uh, particular music theory method and supplemented that. And what I do with it, as they did with it, is while students are waiting to get their musical instrument at the, in the first few weeks of the school year, this is a good way to put you know, something meaningful in their toolbox. When they get their instrument later on, they'll have the musical knowledge to rely upon and to use uh, um, for their, you know, learning their musical instrument. They can worry about their posture, playing the violin, uh, and where to put the, the bow on the strings, and where to put their fingers on, you know, on the fingerboard. Or a trumpet player making, you know, figuring out how to make a sound on their mouthpiece, uh, and then blowing into the trumpet uh, with the correct fingerings for A or B or whatever uh, those first couple of notes are that they have to learn. So um, I find that uh, music theory should come before uh, playing the actual instrument, and sometimes hand in hand. Um, and then as they are learning their musical instrument, then you should be able to supplement it with music theory, with key signatures, as they progress through the other methodology that they're learning in band class. And um, make sure that they're also doing some ear training as well. Uh, I teach uh, simple intervals at the beginning uh, stages. Um, they listen, they are able to not only read what those intervals are as soon as they can read the notation, but they also, I play them on the piano, we play little games with uh, intervals, and it's very helpful to having them learn uh, not only music theory, but how to apply that when they hear it, um, you know, different sounds and intervals on their instrument. This concludes this video on making music more meaningful, uh, especially in the early stages of learning a musical instrument or singing. And um, I have included some of the resources that I mentioned in the description. So if you click on those, you can go um, and visit uh, what those resources look like and even purchase those resources to help you. And uh, in my next video, I'll be expanding upon uh, what to do after music theory, some other methodologies that I use for chorus students and band and orchestra students, and uh, hopefully some other videos that will include um, pedagogical um, you know, methodologies that uh, expand upon getting better at that specific musical instrument. 
This is Salvatore Ventiguerra. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.